So what we would like to do, as we said yesterday, is that we present the, like we've worked out a bit of a structure of how to work together and how to govern, which is quite a big word uh, for what we actually came up with, <laughs> um, this European Primaculture Network. And um, in this uh, session, we will also give you time, especially those of you that are representatives of some organization to think about okay how does that link in with the structure that we have at home how can we make this like how can we make the communication and the workflow work out for both sides and now we're going to try to look at the principles that we somehow designed that could you know over drive the european permaculture network so we have three principles you know, in any good permaculture that I know, there are three ethics. Now we have three principles. The first one has to do with self-government and sovereignty. And states something like this, that each permaculture association, institute, organization maintains its own sovereignty and has the right to determine, determine its own policies, pathways and internal affairs. How sounds for you this? Okay. Any kind of uh, question, resistance? Perfect. I imagine that everyone going to be really happy with this. <laughs> Second one, it's called freer agreements. And that means something like shared protocols, agreements, contracts, procedures and standards can nonetheless become almost universally adopted across the European permaculture network. Proposals developed at the European Permaculture Convergence by working groups of the European Permaculture Network and by its council can be incorporated by each sovereign body into their own rules, operations and procedures by their own free agreement. And the last one, transparency. And that means that we have a list of which organization adopt which kind of protocols and we want to publish this on the website for transparency and better understanding of our common ground. So it's like this, you are as an organization uh, governing yourself, but you can still say, um, and we adopt this policy or this uh, protocol or whatever to our organization. And that is made and, public. And that's made public, exactly. So people can look it up and you, it can be vice versa as well. Yeah, like you can write it on your national website, but it's also going to be on the European network website. So we don't have to, to buy the whole. No, exactly. It's like bit by bit. So there are, again, three principles. It's like the first one is self-government and sovereignty. The second is free agreements. And the third one is transparency. OK, so um, Save a Permaculture Association, we're a, we are self-organizing and we have our own sovereignty mm -hmm. we have our own identity um, and this doesn't take that away we run a diploma system and other groups in europe have adopted similar protocols so we could say okay let's let's say which ones of your which organizations and networks are using this diploma process so we could have a we could then have a, a, a free agreement that this is a process that we uh, we will publicly say the three of us are working together on that same diploma process. We invite any other European networks um, to join us in that protocol if they want. So if that protocol seems like it's the right one for uh, Slovenia, then Slovenia says, OK, yeah, we're, we're going to adopt the same protocols and principles. They're part of then now there's four doing that. But say uh, Portugal says, we're going to do our diploma a bit differently. So that's fine. Portugal might find it works with Italy and it works with Spain and it creates something which is a little bit different and that's okay the diversity is encouraged and and is um, welcome so is it good enough for now and safe to try yes, yes. 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 Okay. Thanks, Peter. so everything that we are looking now it's not uh, carved in stone yeah? so everything that rules somehow a, a dynamic an organization can be changed by its 
own uh, stakeholders, in this case, decide that. Yeah. So in any moment, anyone can say like, hey, I feel that this is not okay, and maybe we should go to the discussion, if it's really uh, valid. So I would move forward to the structure. as we've been envisioning. So we've been envisioning uh, two components. One is the working groups and the other one is country representatives. In the working groups, there will be forum around specific projects, issues, or regional clusters. For example, the European Permaculture Convergence, communication, climate change, educational standards, Mediterranean climate, bioregionalism, whatever. So this can be part of is thematic, thematic workshops, uh, working groups, pardon. The second one has to do with country representatives. So each national organization or network nominates two people that can link their network and the European permaculture network. Yeah. Uh, just to draw us back to the mission, which is to um, nurture an effective permaculture network. So one of the benefits of us working together in this way is that we can start to help Hungary, yeah. Portugal, Netherlands. Belgium, Netherlands. But one of our tasks is to s facilitate and support and enable strong networks to evolve in each of those countries. So how can we assist? Okay, we don't know yet, but that's one of our tasks, mm -hmm. is to assist that process. Yeah. So okay. I would like to move forward to the governance thing. <laughs> governance. And who makes decision about what? So we have basically three elements here. There's a proposal. The first one is the, are the working groups that makes their own decision about their own affairs and can generate proposals for wider adoption via the Permaculture Council. So we already talked about the working groups. This is just reinforcing who is taking decision about what. The second is the Permaculture Council that makes any larger proposals that affect the whole and those and these are offered for national networks, organization and groups to ratify and adopt. Because it, like we're, we're not a decision making body anyway, like that's, that's not how we understand ourselves. We understand ourselves as a proposal offering body, kind of like the network council thing. Yeah, so it's a meta network. With this meta network, what we felt like Oh, suddenly the permaculture movement was really interesting, like how we can really connect at this European level. But to connect at the European level, I need to have, you know, structures in place. And also like the permaculture movement were looking, feeling like maybe we should have a European permaculture network that enable us to connect with that layer. So somehow it's like if I put a picture in front of you and you're feeling like ah, that's something that I can step into it. I feel like drawn to go there. And when I start to, to, to get into that picture, I'm also questioning what I really have as, that enables me to get into that picture or not. So very broadly speaking, what we would like to happen in the next um, 12 months is the following. And that's, it's not to say that this is all that should happen, <laughs> but that's the minimum that we think should happen. Um, and that is, uh, we would like to find uh, representatives of regions, organizations, like regional networks, ne networks, national networks, um, as much as possible. Like people that ca can t fulfill this function of uh, getting information from the European network and taking it back into their countries or into their regions. Like you, you make it up yourself, but like spread the information. Um, we would like to have the inaugural meeting of the European Permaculture Network at the UPC in Italy. <laughs> so 12 months to go. Um, and one thing that uh, we've discussed a few months ago already, and which is basically decided but not implemented yet, is that we've got this, um, from this European Permaculture Teachers Partnership, we've got a very professionally made newsletter that Kat has been making for the last years. Thanks, Kat. Thank so we would like to turn this EPT newsletter into a UPN newsletter. 
because the structure is already there. It's not about teaching only anyway for quite a while already. Mm. And our proposal would be that we um, slowly start turning it into representing the different aims of the European network and just getting news from, from the different working groups and something into this newsletter. And part of what's already in the newsletter is a country news. So there are um, quite a few organizations already that feed in news from their countries' networks already. Mm. Currently, we're uh, using the Permaculture Council.eu website uh, for disseminating information about creating this network. So if you want to be kept in the loop, that's one place that you could check out. So the vision and mission and aims, we already put them up there and said that this is our current proposal for vision, mission and aims. Um, if you want to be added to the European network mailing list, send an email to me. Um, I can just add you. We, there is like 130 or something people on it, maybe 150. It's actually open, so I'm just going to send you a link and you can just add yourselves. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you can also pass it on to other people, just spread that in your networks. <coughs> and to su subscribe to the EPT slash European Network uh, newsletter, go to permateachers.eu. That's the website of the Permaculture Teachers Partnership. If uh, people will have something they want to um, have in the newsletter, is that my address is yeah. there as the editor? Yeah. So catch up at gmail.com. And it's actually going to come out quite soon, isn't it? The, the next, next one. The next yeah, one is actually going to come out quite soon, shop. isn't it? Yeah. Shop. Shop. Like shop. Shop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for your attention and collaboration. Wow.